Mr. Booker, Cory Booker, has dropped out of the 2020 presidential race. Au revoir. C'est fini. Okay, it's over. Last week, or was it two weeks ago, whenever Julian Castro dropped out, I correctly predicted that Cory Booker was next. <laughs> you see, these are candidates that they're polling so low and they've been struggling to raise money. It's a sinking ship, okay, since a long time. If you guys remember back in September, Cory Booker said something like, if he doesn't raise $1.7 million in a week that he's dropping out, Somehow, miraculously, he got the money, and it was able to keep him afloat, but now it's January 2020, and it's over. He's almost been in this race for a year now, okay? So he started his campaign in February 2019, which is, yes, it's quite astonishing. But anyway, he's been in it for almost a year, and now it's over. It's over. Okay, so... In an email to supporters, Booker said that the campaign did not have the money to continue competing, especially given that he would miss Tuesday's debate and will likely be forced off the campaign trail to serve as a juror in Trump's upcoming impeachment trial in the Senate. <laughs> Bernie and Warren and Biden are all jurors, too, in this impeachment trial. But anyway. Now, the only thing that I remember Cory Booker doing in this race... <laughs> is every single time in the debates, he would completely change the subject just to say that, you know, like, they'd be talking for, about healthcare, for example, and then it's his turn to speak. The moderators give him the floor. And then he's like, I, can I just take a second to say that we got to stop this infighting and we have to unite against Donald Trump? Yes, you need to defeat Donald Trump. No shit. But we're talking about healthcare right now, so why can't you focus on that? He did this several times, okay, during several debates. I mean, I thought, like, is he doing a bit here? Like, what's going on? So anyway, nothing memorable, okay? I mean, yes, Cory Booker is not the worst candidate, you know, but in case you're a first-time watcher here, in case you don't know what's up, <laughs> what we're interested in is real progressive candidates okay someone like bernie sanders we don't have time for people who are somewhere in between or not too sure about their convictions and what they want to do okay so when we see candidates like this like castro like booker yes they're great they're not as bad as someone like pete booty juggalo you know or amy klobuchar who are real hardcore centrists but they can't win and they're not really 100% on board with what we want. So why are we wasting our time with you? Okay. As I've said before, what we need right now is for this field to thin so that voters aren't blinded by a choice of 50 uh, centrists or mild progressives. And they can see that, okay, the real choice here is between Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Joe Biden. And so once that happens, I think the gloves are going to come off on all sides and people are going to see who the real progressive is, which is Bernie Sanders. Okay. But right now it's hard to tell when you have so many people in the race who are diluting the field, diluting the term progressive, pretending that they support the same positions as Bernie Sanders to kind of ride off of his popularity, maybe steal some of his base, maybe sway some voters. We need that to stop. Okay. And so Cory Booker is out just like Castro. Mainly, it's money, okay? I mean, they can't sustain their campaigns, right? They just don't have <laughs> that grassroots support that you need. And it's really crazy when you think about how well Bernie Sanders is doing. I mean, this guy is steamrolling everyone. I mean, it's, it's so enormous. He's doing better than the candidates that are taking corporate money, okay? That have no morals, that will take any money from anyone. And, I mean, it's astounding, right? So, it really shows you the contrast here. When you have real support from real working class people, what that can do. And, as I've said before, it's propelled across four years, two elections, this grassroots support for Bernie Sanders, right? That's how powerful it is. So, he doesn't have to worry about stuff like this. But when you're, like, somewhere in the middle, you know, 
<laughs> you're leaning towards being a progressive, but you're not really 100% a progressive. No, you're not going to find that support because people aren't convinced by you and they can see through it. Okay. You know, when we're talking about Medicare for all, when we talk about $15 minimum wage or a Green New Deal or these progressive pillars, we don't second guess if Bernie Sanders really means what he says. Okay. We don't have to worry if he supported another position a few years ago or if he took money from someone who has a conflicting interest with these policies. No, we just know he's legit. That's our guarantee. But with these other candidates, man, it just ain't there. Okay. So he's out. And, you know, it's not just the money, okay? He was also polling at 0%, 1%, right? Even if you look at places like South Carolina, you know, most black voters were going with Biden, not with Booker, okay? So according to Seawright, she said the black community in South Carolina and elsewhere was looking for the candidate best able to beat Trump and that Booker did not necessarily fit that profile. Now, <laughs> speaking of Trump, here's the funny part, okay? So a few minutes after Cory Booker announced that he was out of the race, <laughs> Donald Trump posted this on Twitter. Really big breaking news. Booker, who was in zero polling territory, just dropped out of the Democrat presidential primary race. Now I can rest easy tonight. I was so concerned that I would someday have to go head to head with him. Man, come on, man. <laughs> look, look, look. Trump is an abomination but the guy is <laughs> i mean look at this trolling man it, it is funny it is funny i'm sorry it really is funny like for a guy who's talking all the time about defeating donald trump dude how are you gonna do that you're polling at zero if you really want to defeat donald trump you go with bernie sanders Everyone knows this. We say this all the goddamn time. Anyone with a shred of genuine knowledge about politics and who is honest knows that to beat Donald Trump, you need to go with Bernie Sanders. Okay? Not Cory Booker. Not Amy Klobuchar. Not Joe Biden. So this is accurate what he's saying. Okay? Come on, man. Some guy who's polling at 0% is going to beat Trump. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, man? Joe Biden, who's technically number one nationally, God knows how, can't even beat Donald Trump. You tell me Cory Booker is? Come on. No, 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 no. But anyway, I mean, I mean, you know, Trump, for all the shit that he says, he has some good trolls sometimes. Definitely. <laughs> and by the way, I don't know if you guys saw, but he was also trying to troll Bernie Sanders. And it's kind of funny because, you know, Bernie Sanders goes after him a lot on Twitter and he never answers. You know, I feel like Trump is scared of him. He's, he never replies or attacks Bernie, like hardly ever. Okay, so what he did this week, though, look at what he tweeted. He says, wow, crazy Bernie Sanders is surging on the polls, looking very good against his opponents in the do nothing party. So what does this all mean? Stay tuned. And then Bernie Sanders told him, <laughs> it means you're going to lose. So. There you go. The reason I'm bringing this up is to show you the contrast between a guy who's in the 2020 race and a true opponent to Donald Trump. Okay? I'm trying to portray that contrast to you effectively here by showing you Bernie Sanders against Cory Booker. That guy had no chance. Cory Booker had no chance. Okay? It's not just a question of beating Trump. Okay? Yes, it's great to beat Trump, but what about the future of the country? What about the future of the party? What kind of real incremental change are you bringing to the country? Not as much as Bernie, okay? So you see the real difference here, right? And, you know, of course, you have a lot of people saying that, okay, now you have an even wider Democratic primary because you have another candidate of color now who just dropped out. Yes, okay, it's good to have a diverse field, but I'm telling you this as a brown dude myself. What we care most about is policy, right? We care about substance, I don't care about the color of your skin if you're going to be a corporate hack, right? Not saying Cory Booker is a corporate hack, but just in general. So that's fine and dandy if we were talking about like, if we had 20 progressives in this race, like real progressives, and then they were all white, yeah, okay, that would be a problem. But we don't. We only have one progressive, and I really don't care the color of your skin <laughs> at this point, okay? We just need the progressive to win. That's it. It's about the policy. So there you go. and. You know, we got the debates coming up on Tuesday. 
And I mean, Cory Booker, no way he was qualified for that, right? I think we have like five candidates qualified at the moment. I got to check again, but there was no way he was going to make it. Neither was Castro. So they couldn't even be on the debate stage. They're polling in single digits, like 1%, and they got no money to keep the campaign afloat. It's over, man. I'm not sad to see him go. Just like I'm not going to be sad to see Klobuchar go. Actually, I'm going to be happy <laughs> and even happier to see Booty Juggalo leave. And oh, Biden. Oh, I can't wait for him to, to go. So another one bites the dust. 